I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I've been using an arbor mounted tool to remove rust on a few things here in the shop. I originally started out with it with the idea I wanted to remove some rust off some saw blades and then once I got it working I realized it worked really good on other things too. But it had one problem. It uses a keyless chuck. Now keyless chuck is kind of a nice idea if you're doing something where you're going to be changing the bits a lot. Uh, it allows you to loosen and tighten them up uh, just basically by spinning it by hand. But it doesn't hold so well. If the chuck is perfect and the shaft is perfect, it'll grip just fine. Any little discrepancy, things start getting a little wonky. This Jacobs type keyed chuck has a lot more leverage. It'll tighten right up and crush down on something that's even a little bit out of round. This one has a half inch bore. It'll handle a really big arbor. But I don't intend to run anything that big on that little motor. So I've been able to use this. But I think I want to change it over and run a little chuck like this one. Now this one came off a drill motor. It's just a standard Jacobs chuck. It's a call it 7B, that's the size of it. It'll accept anything up to a quarter inch in diameter. On the little things that I'm using, all the shanks on all the abrasive tools are quarter inch. So this will work out just fine. But to make it work, I can't use this arbor. This arbor is half inch thread. This one takes a 3 8 24 thread, which is a fine thread. And it'll work, but I'm going to have to make a new arbor to mount it on. But that's easy enough to do. Just cut off a piece of stock, stick it in the lathe, turn it down, run a thread on it, and I'm done. So that's where we're going to go today. I'm going to make another arbor, a replacement for this one. At least I'm going to try. I want to cut down a piece of this 3 quarter inch bar stock to make the arbors out of. And I got one little problem. This one won't go through the back of the lathe. The bore on the headstock is big enough to handle it, but I don't have enough room behind the lathe, and that means if I stuck it in the chuck, I'd have too much hanging out here on the end. I want to be able to face off the end of it, so all I'm going to do is mark out the size piece that I need, chop it off. I'm going to make two arbors, one for myself and one as a spare. Making a quick check on the depth of the thread, the bottom of the pocket is three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm going to put a three quarters of an inch stub on the end of this thing and thread it down to 3 8 24. That way I'll be able to thread this right on there. And this 3 8 24 is a standard size for most small drill motors that I have. Yours may be different. You'll want to check and make sure the thread size on yours before you go making an arbor. Now since I'm going to Put this on the standard shaft of a motor. I know that the shaft on my motor is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. This one has a little bushing on the inside. It'll take it from 5 eighths to half inch. On this arbor, the depth of the pocket is an inch and 5 eighths. So I'm going to stick with that. That's a good size. The outside of the arbor is inch and 3 quarters. So I'm going to have a dimension on this shaft of inch and 3 quarters plus three quarters. That brings it out to two and a half inches long. I'm going to give myself a little room to face things off. I can always cut it shorter. It's a bit harder to make it longer. Yep, I'm wearing PPE. Makes a lot of noise and flings stuff all over the place.
knock the burrs off the end of it just a little bit. Now we'll face off the end. Put a little oil in the machine. Doesn't take much, just a drop or two. But you always want to oil your machines whenever you use them. It's what kept it around all these years so that I can run it myself. It only takes a minute and we're ready to go. Give myself a reference mark at the three quarter inch depth. Measure twice, cut once, three quarter right on the money. Now if this was a little bit bigger lathe, I probably could make the next cut in a single pass, but I'm having to sneak up on it because this is an old lathe that's got a flat belt drive and it slips. Since this is a digital micrometer, if it had batteries in it and the thing worked, it would be telling me what the dimension of the part is right here in this little window. But this guy was, uh, let's say, tossed out as junk. Still works. You can still read the dial. It still measures everything just fine. But the electronics don't work anymore. That's okay. I don't need to have them work. I'm more than happy enough to measure the outside and read the barrel. The barrel tells me that this is 0.427. Now, it's a little warm, so it's probably closer to 0.426. It expands a bit with heat. I want to have it about five thousandths under three eighths of an inch. Why do I want to have it under? Well, if I make the thread a full thread, 100% engagement, it's a good chance it's going to get hung up inside the chuck. So I'm going to make it a little bit undersize. That little tiny point out there at the end of the thread, it's cool if you can do it, but it's not really necessary. 80% thread engagement is more than enough to be sturdy. 90% is about as far as I'd ever want to go. So to get to 375 from 427, I need to drop it down 52 thousandths and then take another five off of that. So that's 57 thousandths, smaller in diameter than what it is right now. With a full size lathe, with a good tool and everything working right, 57 thousandths, all I'd do is just turn it in 57 thousandths. It would take the pass and I'd be done. This little lathe, I'm going to have to sneak up on it. Check the dimension again. Don't be surprised if it's not right.
We're at 380. That tells me I can take off another five thousandths. But I got spring. Spring is where all the tool stack moves and doesn't cut to a full depth. So I'm just going to take a finish cut across the whole length of that shaft, see what I come up with. Right at 375. Right on the money, 0 0.370. Unplug the lathe. Oh, almost made a mistake there. I need to face off this right here to make sure that it's 90 degrees. Not important for this particular project, but I just want to do it because that's how I like to have it. At the same time, I'm going to make an undercut. I want to have about an eighth of an inch away from the face with no threads on it. So I'm just going to start the lathe, run the tool in, Unplug the lathe, remove the part, turn it around, and face off this side. Well, we're 15 minutes into the project, so here's a good stopping point. Tune in next time, and we'll get into the whole boring story. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.